Hello, good day. Um, hope you're all having a great day. I know you're turning on a video to watch a math lesson, so it must be the best day of your life. <laughs> um, I'm going to look today at solving quadratic equations, and I'm going to compare methods to complete the square method, which by now we should be pretty good at, and then we're going to look at our newest discovery, and that is the formula, the quadratic formula, which enables us to solve quadratic equations um, in, at any time, any, no matter how complex. So anyway, um, we used to learn how to sketch the graph so we know what the solution should look like. I just put that in there as a reminder. That's a skill set we should possess. And then the completing the square process, um, after I uh, factor out the 2 and I moved this uh, 1 over to the other side of the equation, um, I established my x box to just to uh, figure out what the magic number is. And recall that 9 fourths is not the value um, that I've added to the left side. I've added 9 halves, and so I add that same value to the right side to restore balance to the force. Um, this then is designed to be a perfect square, so I factor it. It is a product of two squares. Then I'm going to multiply both sides by a half to get rid of the 2, giving us 7 fourths on the left hand side, or right hand side, sorry. And uh, then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. The square root of both sides gives me the absolute value. Um, and to get rid of the absolute value, we used to break up into two separate equations. And what I've learned is um, we are going to have the opposite of this expression or the expression all by itself. I'm going to skip a step and bump the plus or minus over to the other side right away. It makes life simpler in the long run, even though it's, I don't know, whatever. All right. So notice here I also took the square root of 7 fourths and made it in the square root of 7 divided by 2. What's implied there apparently is we're able to take the square root of the numerator and the denominator separately. Perhaps later we'll understand why we can do that, but all I know is every time I do this I still get right answers, so it must be true. Um, finally, I'm going to add 3 halves to both sides and get the solutions that you see. Now before I use the quadratic formula to get the solutions to the same equation, I'd like to point out that uh, these are two numbers, one and a half plus some number which is going to be a little smaller than two, and then we got one and a half minus a number a little bit smaller than two. We should have decimal approximations here, and um, we should be able to kind of justify that they match where we predicted they would. Um, but that's not the purpose of this video, so the thinking part of this I'm going to leave out. We're just going to look at some procedures today. Um, anyway, uh, I've got this formula, which if I take the a, um, which is 2, the b, negative 6, and c values of negative 1, substitute into the appropriate places, bake at 350 degrees for 10 minutes, and I get a batch of cookies or solutions to a quadratic equation. Now my job is to learn how to simplify this mess, which isn't that bad. The opposite of negative 6 is 6, um, so negative 6 squared is 36, and 4 times 2 times 1 is 8, 2 times 2 is 4. 36 minus 8 is 28, divide that by 4, but my problem is now I see this, and I compare it to this, and they really don't look a lot alike. I can see that 6 over 4 could reduce to 3 halves, but I'm having a little trouble with this square root of 28 and this uh, square root of 7 over here, um, and what's happening. So let's explore this a little further. The first question is, is this expression and that expression the same? In other words, um, is this giving us the same two numbers as this is? Before I establish whether these are the same, I want to point out that I can use technology to graph and find the solutions to this equation by looking for the x-intercepts, and I find 0.177 and 2.823. What I also did with Desmos is uh, it's actually just a regular old calculator, so I entered in uh, 3 halves plus the square root of 7 over 2 and 3 halves minus the square root of 7 over 2, and I got these two solutions, which match my graphs. And then I also took my quadratic formula solutions, which look a little different. I put those into Desmos, and I got the same two numbers. So this expression must be the same as this expression in value. Now I have to figure out, is there a way that I could prove it without technology? So, I'm going to start with the quadratic formula um, expression. It gives me the most to work with. And the first thing I'm going to do is to separate it into two equal fractions using the distributive property. I'm going to divide both the 6 and the root 28 by 4. Um, then, I look at the square root of 28, and I notice that t although 28 is not a perfect square, 4 is, 4 times 7 is 28. Now you can see I've extracted a 7, which reminds me of that green solution I had earlier. But now what we do with those square roots. 
This is an idea that I had. I'm not sure if it works or not, but can I take the square root of 4 times the 7 and make it the square root of 4 times the square root of 7? I'm not sure, but I'm going to keep plowing forward with this and see if it works. What I mean by if it works is am I going to get an expression that matches my green solution that I found earlier? And the answer to that question appears to be yes. Notice what I did was I took the square root of 4, which is 2, and then 2 over 4 reduces to 1 over 2. So basically I was able to simplify this fraction into the square root of 7 over 2. Apparently the square root of 28 over 4 is the same number as the square root of 7 over 2, which is the same as the green solutions that I got earlier. So this technique of taking um, quadratic formula solutions and breaking them down a little further is something that we want to try to work on uh, in the next se several days. Quick example with, Latin, uh, with uh, less talking, I hope, um, would be uh, to explore uh, completing the square to solve this. And I want to, uh, be, I'll assume that you're experts at this by now, and I'll just walk you through. Take the square root of both sides to get absolute values. Consider the positive or negative opportunities. Subtract 2 from both sides, and these are the solutions. Again, if I was thinking video, I would, I would probably estimate the square root of 2.5 and, a half and uh, get values for these solutions, and I would have had a mental sketch and all that. But again, this is more about some procedural stuff. So, quadratic formula, I write it down every time. Then I enter in A, B, and C values accordingly without simplifying. I do that every time. And then I just evaluate each part and clean it up. So once again, we're faced with the interminable problem, uh, are these the same or not? And this one's a little tricky, I, I'm not sure what to do with this, but what I am going to do is uh, take this uh, expression right here, uh, first of all, negative 8 over 4 is nice and easy, but I'm going to take this and break it down much the same way I did before. x equals 2 plus or minus square root of 4 times 10 over 4, and square root of 4 is square root of 10, I separate because it seems like that worked last time, and the square root of 4 is 2, and 2 divided by 4 is 1 half, so now I get this result. Now becomes another question, and this question I'm not going to answer on this video, but I want to see if anybody in class can actually answer the question for me, is the square root of 5 over 2 the same as the square root of 10 divided by 2? If so, can you prove it using techniques similar to ones that I've demonstrated in this video? So, anybody in class tomorrow can tell me how to show that the square root of 10 over 2 is equal to the square root of 2 and a half. I'd be thrilled to see it. So there's a challenge for the night. Have a great day.